Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish, and today we are going to be comparing the images from three different Leica M mount 28 millimeter lenses in vastly different price points, um, sizes, all sorts of stuff. So we have the Seven Artisans 28 millimeter F1.4. It's gonna be the only 1.4 in the group. We have the Voigtlander 28 millimeter F2 Ultron version two. So it's the second new version that just came out. Um, and then we have the Leica 28 millimeter F2 Summicron version two as well. So we're getting, um, you know, a pretty decent comparison of three, you know, readily available 28 millimeter lenses. Instead of going over all their, you know, sizes and all sorts of stuff, we're gonna do that part really, really quick. Uh, and then we're gonna jump into the images and actually see how they perform in comparison to each other. So obviously the Seven Artisans is enormous in comparison to the other two. The Voigtlander is super small, like almost, almost falling the other way small. Um, and then the Leica is just kind of perfect in those terms. The Voigtlander is definitely the smallest and the lightest out of the three. Um, and honestly, they all feel really, really great. I definitely own the Leica Summicron and um, there's definitely reasons for that. The size and weight and uh, build and all that kind of stuff are fantastic, but I've definitely been really, really surprised by the Voigtlander. So if you're interested in my take on this lens, I will definitely be making a review soon for this thing. So definitely make sure you are subscribed to get that when it comes out. All right, so now that we've seen the lenses, I'm not gonna talk too much more about the build and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's gonna be plenty of other reviews on all of these. I've done reviews on 28 millimeter lenses and I will be doing one on this one soon. And I have done one on the Seven Artisans, so you can check those out if you're interested. But for now, let's jump in to the actual comparisons and see how the lenses perform against each other. And I think you'll be surprised at the results. So on the left here is the Seven Artisans at 1.4 and then on the right is the seven artists and stop down to f2 one of the things that i was actually really really surprised at is how well um this lens is doing in terms of sharpness so we're zooming into 100 percent here if we want to zoom in further you know you're not going to get like kind of peak sharpness and stuff when you're zooming into past 100 percent but overall, you can definitely see that stopping down is much more helpful in terms of sharpness. But at the same time, um, you know, it actually looks pretty good. The interesting thing is it seems like it's actually shifting slightly um, to be almost more green. But you'll just notice that generally, um, you know, when you stop down a lens, you're losing vignetting and stuff like that. But it's, it is interesting that the color has actually changed a little bit as well. Um, and the biggest areas where you can kind of see the difference between 1.4 and f2 are up here in these out of focus elements, but really they're not that far off. So overall pretty impressive, but obviously it looks better at f2. All right, now that we are on to the seven artisans on the left at f2 versus the Voigtlander on the right at f2, you can actually see a slight bit where the Voigtlander is wider. So you're getting a little bit further back. Uh, you can definitely see in this corner where the side of my house starts to uh, uh, show up a little bit more. And you can definitely tell that the Roloflex that we are taking photos of is a little bit smaller. Um, but even though the Seven Artisans is definitely sharp and we were kind of commenting on how good it looked there, the Voigtlander is significantly sharper um, and you can definitely I don't know, see the difference quite a bit in, an, in a good way. Um, you see a little bit of chromatic aberration, uh, but these are really kind of intense versions of this. So overall, yeah, it looks really, really good. And it's definitely much better than the Seven Artisans, but the Seven Artisans actually is surprising with how good it looks. And now here we are to what I think a lot of people are most interested in, and that is the difference between the Voigtlander on the left and the Leica Summicron on the right. One of the things I noticed kind of first of all is that the Voigtlander has a little bit more of that swirl type of bokeh and stuff up towards the top. So you can definitely tell that the bokeh 
on the Sumicron up on this part up here just looks a lot cleaner. It's a lot just more uniform um, where up here you're starting to get kind of like that rainbowy swirl kind of thing. In general, you know, it still looks really, really good. And it's hard to tell on my eyes which one is sharper. It actually might look like the Voigtlander is. Yeah. I would say at this, it seems like the Voigtlander is definitely a little bit sharper, which is honestly sort of shocking to me uh, that the Voigtlander would be sharper in the center. Uh, it also seems like the Leica is actually slightly wider, which is actually really interesting considering the Voigtlander was wider than the seven artisans again all these were taken on a tripod and the only thing i was doing was switching the lenses out so another one of the things that the leica has kind of over the voigtlander is you can definitely tell that there is less vignetting um, it looks maybe like it, the exposure on the leica is slightly brighter possibly um, but you can definitely tell as well that there is more magenta in the voigtlander and then more of kind of a green cast to the leica the voigtlander actually might even be sharper in a few of these instances. So it's definitely possible as I'm taking these wide open that I have slightly missed focus. But if you are thinking, hey, I'm gonna get the Leica lens so that you know I get the ultimate sharpness, I think the Voigtlander's got you beat there. Now, what it does have is you can tell that it's a little bit cleaner in terms of um, vignetting. Neither of them seem to struggle with chromatic aberration much, but um, in parts like right here on the Voigtlander, you can see more than on the Leica, but then on the Leica, you see a little bit more up here than on the Voigtlander. And so in terms of sharpness and chromatic aberration and stuff, yeah, you can definitely see here as well that the Voigtlander seems to be sharper for sure, which again is, Surprising and uh, pretty awesome for people who are considering the Voigtlander between the two. Another thing on the sides, I don't really see this being much of an issue. Obviously, we're kind of just dealing with out of focus elements here as well. But up here, oddly enough, because I would say that the bokeh in the Voigtlander is more distracting up in this area um, as the Leica is more uniform. But as we kind of move out to the edges, there was this portion right here where the Leica actually seems to be more busy and a little bit more, I don't know, distracting. You can see more of the detail in the out of focus area, which just doesn't make things as smooth. So in those terms actually as well, the Voigtlander seems to be doing a pretty good job. And now we're gonna move on to stress dust number two, where you're shooting this wide open and pretty far away. This is the seven artisans at 1.4 and then again at F2. You definitely see that neither of these are too sharp, but I would say they're definitely usable for that area. You can see the bokeh up there actually looks really similar. So interesting that that would be so similar. Um, so there are the two comparisons on the seven artisans. Now we're gonna move over. The seven artisans is on the left and the Voigtlander is on the right. You can still see that the seven artisans has a little bit cleaner bokeh there um, and the Voigtlander has a little bit smaller, but overall they look really good and you can definitely tell that the Voigtlander is, is sharper for sure. Now we're gonna move on to comparing the Leica to the Voigtlander. And again, at this kind of a length, you know, you're not really looking for crazy, crazy sharpness. And I would say the Voigtlander here looks like it has a little bit more chromatic aberration, but that also could just be a slight miss focus at a, you know, further distance focusing with a rangefinder. Um, yeah, you're gonna get some of that at 250%. But overall, I mean, I would say that the Voigtlander is comparing very well to the Leica in many, many ways. All right, so what'd you think? Uh, I feel like I was pretty surprised with the results. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. 
And again, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, uh, especially if you were interested in seeing the review on the Voigtlander. I also made a review kind of combination between the Sumicron and the original Voigtlander, and I will definitely say that this one is much better than the original Ultron, so there's that. If you want more information on the Seven Artisans, I have a full review on that lens as well. Definitely did a review on the M10s, so just lots of stuff um, going on on the channel. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.